Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be doing another tutorial but instead of using embroidery floss and making a friendship bracelet we are going to be making a seamless Rex lace bracelet. Now I did do a tutorial for these. It was one of the first videos I ever ever did and it just to this day, I still get comments on it that it wasn't clear or anything like that. And it was like, I think I was like 16 maybe. I have to have been older than that, but I was definitely like in high school still when I made the video and I know it was really unclear. And now that I've gained some years and have taught more people how to actually make them, I feel like I can instruct it a little bit better. So I'm going to completely redo this tutorial today and hopefully you guys will understand how to make this seamless Rex Lace bracelet by the end of today's video. So to make this bracelet, you are going to need a few things. First things first, you will need some plastic lace. Now this comes in a variety of, or sold by a variety of brands and comes under a bunch of different names. For instance, this is a primary brand that I buy and it's called Rex Lace. Uh, I grew up calling it GIMP, but it is also sold by like Creatology, like here's another brand and it's just called Plastic Lacing. And it's just this flat string and it's like a plastic rubbery material. There isn't much difference between brands. You can buy it in little skeins at like the dollar store and stuff. I just find like this stuff here is a little bit cheaper than this Rex Lace brand. And the only difference is this is a little more stretchy than this stuff. This stuff seems to be a little more uh, thicker and heavy duty, but in the grand scheme of things, I find it doesn't make too much of a difference for me. Um, but again, string is all down to personal preference for people and what they like to craft with. So you will need some of this. You can buy this. I think I want to say it's like $6 or $7 for like a big spool like this. You will also need, of course, because we are working with string as usual, you will need some scissors because you have to cut this string. And sometimes you can bare hand it and rip your string, but you will definitely want scissors for this because you are gonna want to have an angled end on your strings. It will make finishing this process a lot easier. And also to finish this bracelet, you are very likely going to want a safety pin and or a needle, something thin and pointy to help you loosen up some stitches. So first things first is we're going to cut two strings, so one of each color. I'm using these two completely different colors so that it's hopefully easier for you guys to see what I am doing in this tutorial. I'm just going to hold the spool in one hand and the end of the string in the other and pull it all the way across my body for each of these and snip them like that. So now we have found the middle of our strings and we're going to place them in an X. I have my blue string on the bottom and my purple string on the top, okay? So basically with Rex Lace, what you want to do is every open end is going to be covered by a loop. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So for the purpose of starting this bracelet, we're going to call this top left part of our X, string one, the top right, string two, the bottom right, string three, and the bottom left string four. So we're going to fold string three up and over the purple string, so over string two, and we're going to place it to the right hand side of string one. So it looks like this, okay? So this is the one we just folded, that was string three, and it is sitting beside string one, and it has purple string two, trapped in a little loop now, okay? But because we now have this open end over here where string three just folded over, there's nothing going on. If we let this go, it'll just fall back into an X. We need to lock that in with a loop. So to do that, we are going to fold string two in a loop over the end of string three. So string two is going to fold over the end of string three and it is going to come down and it's going to sit to the left of string four okay so we're looking like this right now we got two loops we've got a blue loop and a purple loop 
and we see two blues on one side, two purples together, side by side, okay? So now we have this, we have string three here covered by the string two loop, but now we have string two and it has no loop over it. So we're gonna take string one, and remember this is the bottom most string on our stack here. So this is the one that we didn't fold yet. The blue string we did not fold yet. This is going to come down over string two. So over that open string we just folded to take up the mantle where string three used to be. Okay, so now our blues are on opposite sides. We have a loop over top of string two that we had folded, but we still have now this open string one, which has moved to our string three position. Okay, so we're looking like this. So now we're going to take the bottom most purple string, which was our string four, so the purple we have not folded yet. And we are going to go over top, because we want to create a loop. We want to go over top of our folded string one, which is now in string three position. We're gonna go over top of this loose end, and we're going to put it through the loop that we created with our first blue fold, okay? We're gonna pull that all the way through, and now we see if we let this go, it doesn't actually fall apart anymore because the loops are holding all the strings in place. So we're just going to tighten that up by pulling on our four strings, and you get kind of this checkered pattern, okay? And now if we're still holding it in an X, we see string one, string two, string three, string four. Okay, so purple is now once again across from purple and blue is once again across from blue and they are not side by side. So if you are not looking to make a bracelet, you can continue doing a box stitch, which I will show you the instructions for in just a moment. Or if you want to actually make a bracelet with this, you're going to want to follow the next step, which is to flip this over. So we're going to flip this over and we are going to look at the bottom of this. So you see our little X that we had started with here on the bottom and we're going to do a box stitch because we want both ends of this to be checkered. So don't pull this as tight as you can, okay? Make sure it's fairly tight but do not pull it as tight as you can or you're going to make your life miserable come the end of this bracelet. Okay, so now we are going to go, just like we did before, we're going to call this string one, string two, oops, string two, string three, and string four. So string three, we are going to fold up and we are going to put it to the right of string one, like so. Now, because this is an open end now, we want to fold a loop over that. So we're going to take string two and we are going to fold a loop over our open end. Okay, so now we look like this. And then, because this is now an open end, we want to cover that with a loop. We're going to take our string one, which has not been folded in this rotation yet, okay? So we've only folded string three. So we're going to fold down string one. And we're looking like this now, but we have this open end. And of course we need to close every open end off with a loop. So we are going to take our final string four, the blue that has not been folded in this rotation. And we are going to go over the open end of this purple and put it through the loop of the first fold we did. Okay. And we're going to pull that not as tight as you can, but relatively tight. So we see our checkered pattern again. So at this point, you should see the checkered pattern 
on the side you're looking at right now. And if you were to flip it over, you should see the checkered pattern there as well. Okay, but we don't need to flip this over again. We've done that once. We just move on from here and continue doing our box stitch. So at this point, holding our strings like this in our kind of X formation, it's again string one, string two, string three, string four. So we are going to take string three and we are going to fold it up and it is going to sit beside string one and that is now an open end. So we are going to take string four and we are going to fold it over that open end. And because we don't like open ends in Rex lace, we are going to take string one and fold a loop over that string four, which now has an open end. And finally, we are going to take string two and we are going to go over the open end and through the loop. And that is how I like to fold the box stitch. However, I know some people find that difficult to follow. So if you just found that step difficult to follow, unfortunately, as far as I know, there isn't another way to start a square stitch other than folding each string individually like that. But lucky you, there is a way to continue this without folding individual strings. So what some people do is they'll fold both strings of the same color at once and then weave the other ends. So I'll show you how to do that as well. It's basically the same thing. We're going to fold both of our blue strings. So we've created two loops with our blue strings. But as usual, we don't like open ends just hanging out in Rex lace. So we're going to take this purple that is on the left hand side of our the left hand side of our square, if that makes sense. And we are going to go over our open end and through the loop. And then with our other purple, sorry, this is awkward with the camera here. We are going to go over the open end and through the loop. And then you can pull your strings tight. Personally, I find that a little more difficult to hold on to, but I know people do like folding that way. So I thought I would show that with you. So again, if that looked easier for you, we are going to fold both strings of the same color. So you have two loops side by side like this and you are going to close in your open ends with loops. So we're going to take this purple string and we are going to fold it over our open end and go through the loop. And then the same with this string. We are going to go over the open end of this string and through the loop, like so, and then pull it tight. So whichever method you choose to use, you're going to do that for the length of your bracelet. So for me, I like folding each string individually. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to fold that. Then I want to cover that free end with a loop. And then cover this free end with a loop and then close in that final free end by going over and under. Over the string and under the loop. Like so. So I'm going to fold and then fold over the open end, fold and then over under. Okay. 
So the easiest way to think about it is you're essentially weaving. So we're going to fold and we need to close in that open end. So we're going to fold a loop over it and then we need to close in that open end. So we're going to fold a loop over it and then we're going to go over our open end and lock it all in by putting this string through the loop. And pull it tight. Okay, and if you did like that other method, which it doesn't affect how it looks in the end, so you can switch up methods, try them for a little while and see if you like them. You can fold two of the same colored string at once. So fold the purples over to their opposite sides and then weave your blue strings over, under, over, under. So over the open end here and under the loop. And over the open end over here and under, whoop, I just dropped the string over the open end and under the loop here and then pull it tight okay and that's all you need to do for the length of your bracelet so i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to do this for a bit longer and i will come back and i will show you how to finish this bracelet off Okay, so I have got this pretty much the length I want it, which is to fit around your wrist and have space for at least two fingers in there. So what we want to be sure of at this point is that our bracelet, like I said, fits around your wrist with at least two fingers in there, but also that when you take your end and the top of your bracelet, as we can see here, that you can see two purple loops side by side like this so that you can see the open how do I describe this here so that you can see the side profile of the loop on both sides if you can't see this like if this string is like here and you're looking at it like this and you've got a closed blue loop like that just do one more stitch and you should be lined up like so so here comes the part where we're going to end our bracelet and this is where our safety pin comes in so you're going to want to go ahead and grab your safety pin now and open it up so what we're going to do is because we want this to look seamless we need to create, as you can see here, the stitches on the side create little bumps and they're kind of in a staggered, almost brick-like effect here. And we want to continue that to make the look as seamless as possible. So with the two purple side by side, what we would need to do to make this look seamless is to have a blue, um, we'll call it a brick, a blue brick right here to finish out this staggered pattern, right? So we're going to just make sure this top one is tightened. And we need to take this blue string that's sticking right up in your faces there, and we need to put the end of it down through this purple loop on our starting end of our bracelet. So to do that, we are going to use our safety pin and we're going to put it through this purple loop. And we're going to just pull up on it a bit and kind of loosen that loop up. And this is why I said don't pull it as tight as possible because if you pull it as tight as possible, that's going to make this a whole lot more difficult. This is also why if you did not cut your strings in an angle at the beginning, you'll want to do so now because it's going to make this next step much easier. Okay, so I loosened this purple loop up with the safety pin, just sticking the safety pin in there, like I said. 
and just pulling up on it, it's just gonna loosen it up a little bit. And we're going to now take, when we're holding our bracelet like this with our two purple loops side by side, we are going to take this blue string now and we're going to push it through this purple loop here. So just like this, and with the angle, you can see that little tab comes through. It just makes it easier to grab a hold of and push it through. When you've got a flat end on that, it makes it very, very difficult to get that um, started. Once you've got the string in there, it's easy, but difficult to get it started if you don't have the angled threads. Okay, so now we've got these purple loops filled. So you can see when we pull that tight, there will be a, here, I'll pull it tight so you can see, there will be a blue brick in the middle and it will be as seamless as possible. I'm just gonna pull that loose again so we can finish doing what we need to do here. So next we're going, we've just done that purple side, we're going to go ahead and on this side, you should see that we have two blue loops and that blue string is sandwiched in between them. So we have a blue loop here, a blue loop here, and this blue string is sitting on top of the blue loop as if we had folded it over. So now to get that brick effect, remember, we want to make this purple string create a loop here. So we're going to take our safety pin and we're going to shove it down this blue loop here. And just like that purple loop, sorry guys, give me one second to get through. We're just going to pull up on this and loosen this up a bit. Okay. So now that we've loosened that up a bit, we want this blue string to lay flat over our loop still. And we're going to push this down towards the middle through this loop. And I may need to loosen this a little more. Nope, there we go. So as you can see, I got this little purple tab here now and I can pull that through. So now we look like this. Okay, it looks a little weird right now, but we can see on this side, we now have a blue loop, which when pulled tight, will create our little, uh, or finish our little brick pattern. And the same on this side with this purple. So now we're gonna go to this side and we want to do the exact same thing that we've just done. So this blue string needs to come across and go down that loop to finish the brick pattern on this side. So once again, I'm going to take my safety pin and I'm going to shove it through this purple loop and just loosen this up a bit. There we go. And now I'm going to shove the blue string through the purple loop and pull it out. So it should be looking like this right now. Okay. And then we have one more side here and it's going to be another purple loop that we need to do. So we see we have the two blue loops with the blue string sandwiched in the middle there. And we're going to, I'll see if I can push this through without loosening it. But now this stitch will be the tightest of all of them. Yeah, I'm not gonna be able to. Uh, this stitch will be the tightest of all of them because we've shoved all this extra string into these loops that you may find you need to try this one a couple times and loosen it up a couple times. Okay, so now this is the only string that we haven't pushed through a loop, so we want to go ahead and push that through this blue loop. Let's see, did I get it? Ooh, it's just starting to go through, okay. Let's see, can I get it? Okay, there we go. Let's see, 
I got the very point of it through here. Let's see if I can grab the rest of it. And the answer is apparently no, I cannot. Okay, let's try and push it through a little more. There we go. Okay. So now it looks like this. You should have. I'm going to tighten this a bit just so it's a little bit clearer to see what's going on. So you should have a purple loop and a purple open string and on the opposite side it should look the same a purple loop and a purple a purple loop <laughs> a purple loop and a purple open string a blue loop and a blue open string and a blue loop and a blue open string and these strings should lay flat on top of another purple string so this purple string should lay flat on top of a purple loop okay same as the blue string this open string should lay flat on top of a blue loop and then at this point we have done the hardest part and we just need to pull it tight you may need to play with your strings a bit individually to get them to the right amount of tension to make it look as seamless as you possibly can keeping in mind that you've shoved strings in here so it's not going to look completely seamless as if you had just made the bracelet in one giant round but okay there we go so now your bracelet is technically finished but with gimp like this or plastic lace like this the best thing you can do is to let it set so I would recommend at this point you leave it sit overnight or for a few hours, like three hours at least. And then you can snip these strings off right flush to the bracelet and you will end up with something like this. And just letting that set will just kind of keep the plastic in place there so it kind of forms into shape and doesn't spring out as easily. So I would not suggest trimming it right now. So I'm not going to trim this right now, but you guys can see that the final product will look like this and it will have a bit of stretch to it. So you can get it over your hand. This bracelet was not made for me. So this probably would pop apart if I tried to stick my hand in it. But you guys can see now how to finish that and hopefully that is a lot more clear than that old video but if you have any questions or concerns or if you're still having difficulties following this tutorial please let me know down below if this was helpful though give it a like and subscribe and let me know if you want to see more rex lace or gimp bracelets and tutorials in the future all right guys until next time i will see you all then bye